In this video, we are going to go through moment diagrams. So last class, we learned how to draw a shear diagram. And that'll always be the first step in drawing a moment diagram. Is we start with your beam with the loading, then you have to get the reactionary forces. From the reactionary forces, you can draw the shear diagram, and then that all leads to the moment diagram. So here was an example. We had a, um, a beam with an asymmetrically load eight feet from the edge with a force of 20 kips. And then you find the reactionary forces being 6.67 for F of A and 13.33 for F of B. And then here is your resulting moment, or sorry, shear diagram. Here was another example of a distributed load. You find your reactionary forces, and then a distributed load was a triangular shape for the shear diagram. So this lesson, we will continue our introduction to beam failures. So like I said last video, beams can fail in one of three ways. And last one, we talked a little bit about shear failure. Now we're going to talk about moment failure. And then the third one is torsion. We're not going to learn. And just so you guys know where we're going with this, once we know the maximum shear and the maximum moment, we will then look at actual beams with a specific size to it. And once you know what a beam's specific size is, you can determine the maximum shear or moment that that beam can handle. And thus, you can figure out which size beam you need to be able to handle the maximum moment or shear that you have. So that's where we're going with this ultimately, but we're not there yet. So now we're gonna draw moment diagrams. So bending moment is the result of a shear force which causes the beam to bend. And this bending can cause the beam to deflect too much, leading to the member failing. And when we analyze a beam, we are interested in the maximum bending moment the beam will see, since if the beam does fail, it'll fail first at the maximum, right? It won't it won't fail where there's less force applied, it'll fail where the most force is applied. And therefore, we don't know exactly where the maximum will be, so we will determine the bending moment at each point along the beam span by drawing a moment diagram. So let's talk about moments again. And again, the moment is equal to the force, the shear force, multiplied by the distance to whatever point you're analyzing. So the force applied is a shear force and the distance is a linear length between the shear force and the point we're analyzing. Kind of just said that. Okay, therefore, we can calculate the moment at every point along the beam and this is bold, underlined, and italicized. We can calculate the moment at every point along the beam by calculating the area under the shear diagram. Since the shear is the F over here and the shear diagram takes into account the distance, the area under the curve will give you the moment at that point. So all areas above the X axis or the beam are considered positive all areas below the x-axis are negative. And for those in calculus, this is a real-world example of an integral. For those not in calculus, well, we'll tell you when you're older. So, the example says, find the maximum moment and max shear for the following beam. And this is a typical type of problem. You have your beam, your loading, and you don't know anything else. And I'm going to ask you, okay, what is the maximum moment and the maximum shear this beam will find? Eventually, I'll actually tell you, tell me what size beam we need. And in order to figure out which size beam you need, you need to know what the maximum moment and the maximum shear this beam will see is. So your first step is going to be find the reactionary forces. We've done that in previous videos, so I'm not going to show us how we get them. I'm just telling you, you need to get them. Once you have your reactionary forces, you will then draw the shear diagram. So here's your forces. Next, draw the shear diagram. So we go up 
from this reactionary force, go horizontal since something happens. At 5 feet away, we go down 8 kips. 12.05 minus 8 is 4.05. Nothing happens, so we go over another 4 feet to 9 feet total. Then we go down 11, so 4.05 minus 11 is negative 6.95. Nothing happens until we get to 20. And then at 20, we go up 6.95, going back to 0. Now, we are going to draw the moment diagram. And remember, the moment is going to be the area underneath the curve. So, um, we will first line up the moment diagram so that it is directly underneath the shear diagram. You want it, everything to be lined up since that will kind of help make it a lot easier when you're realizing what's contributing to what. Like this being lined up right here, this drop is clearly the result from this. This drop is clearly the result of that. We're going to do the same for the moment diagram. Next, we're going to break up the shear diagram into simple geometric shapes, one that you can easily calculate the area of. And that's going to be rectangles, triangles, and trapezoids. So right here, I see three triangle, or sorry, three rectangular shapes. And I can easily get the area of each of these rectangular shapes. So this rectangle right here is a length of 12 point, or sorry, length of 5 and a height of 12.05. So the area is 60.25 kip feet. This rectangle is 4.05 times 4, or 16.2 kip foot. And then this one, it's actually going to be a negative because it's below the x-axis or the beam. And that's going to be negative 6.95 times 11, which is going to give me 76.45 kib feet. So remember, we add positive moments and subtract negative ones. So the two positive ones were 60.25 and 16.2, which gives us, if you add them together, a maximum moment of 76.45. And you might realize, oh, that's the same number as the negative one we had before because the area above the curve is going to be equal to the area below the curve. That's kind of a way for you to self-check. So the max moment is negative 76.45 or positive 76.45. doesn't matter. It's the value, like the maximum absolute value. So these are the same. The area above is the same as the area below. So how do we draw that on here? How does that translate? Um, so similar to how a distributed load was linear in the shear, meaning it was like triangular in shape, and this is bold and italicized, showing you the importance, the moment diagram for a point load will be linear. So this is going to start at zero, and then because it's constantly changing for each one foot we go, it's not going to be horizontal because I would say consistent. It's actually going to be linear going up like a triangle. For every new foot you're going, you're adding a lot more. So I'm starting at zero, and I'm going to go up to 60.25. Boom. Then I'm at 60.25, and then I'm going to go up at a new slope. And the slope is going to be the 4.05 right here. So it's going to be a lot less steep. And I'm going to go up an additional 16.2. That'll give me 76.45 right here. Then, because this is negative, I'm going to be going down. And I'm starting at 76.45, and I'm going down 6.95 for each one foot I go. So I'm going to be going down a total of 76.45, which brings me back to zero. Let me show you what that looks like now. And here is your finished moment diagram. Again, you start at zero, then you go up to a height of the area right here, which is 60.25. Because I'm still positive, I'm going to be going up more, which is the 16.2. So 60.25 plus 16.2 brings me into this maximum moment right here. Then because this is negative, we're going to be going downward. The slope is negative 6.95 and it will bring me back to zero because it's going down a total of 76.45 kip feet. And that's how you do the moment diagram for a point load. So notice how it starts and stops at zero. Again, that's a good way to self-check. 
and let's stop there. That'll be the conclusion of the first video.